we developed a method 3.tm to recover transmission matrices more efficiently. A TM characterizes a multiple scattering medium, which is a material that causes the photons to undergo multiple scattering events when light passes through it, and so what the detector sees is a speckle pattern, which is a result of interference of all the random photons. To describe the random effect of the multiple scattering mediums, we define the transmission matrix. Formally, the transmission matrix of an optical system at a given wavelength is a complex matrix, which connects the optical field in the nth, nth output mode to the field in the nth input mode. The TM corresponds to the system consisting of both the scattering sample and the optical system between the SOM and the CCD camera sensor. It is a huge matrix with n columns and m rows. To measure the TM, we change the pattern on the SOM, which in turn changes the angle of light incident on the scatterer. The complex image corresponding to each SLM pixel constitutes one column of the TM, and a TM can be constructed after going through the N modes on the SLM. However, the sensors can only capture the magnitudes of the complex columns, so different algorithms are proposed in order to recover the complex information. One common method is phase shifting holography. The laser hits all parts of the SLM, and the SLM is, div is divided into two parts, the reference part and the controlled part and only the TM corresponding to the controlled part is measured. Four-step phase shifting holography is performed on the captured images. For each input mode, four intensity images are captured to recover the complex output field by combining them accordingly. After the TM is recovered, light can be focused through the random medium. The holography method relies on a separate reference half to form interference patterns with the controlled segment, and this, this results in a few disadvantages. The dimension of the TM is limited by the size of the central area on the SLM, and the interference measurements are easily susceptible to noise. Another class of method that does not require measurements with reference is developed, which is phase retrieval. In phase retrieval, the binary amplitude modulator, or DMD, is used to modulate the input field, and the modulated field is then passed through the medium. We first create a series of random illumination patterns and capture the corresponding calibration images through the scatterer. The magnitude images are then stacked together into a matrix, and we run phase retrieval algorithms on these intensity measurements to recover the complex TM row by row. Here are some image reconstruction results by running one of the phase retrieval algorithms. So phase retrieval algorithms are more stable, and they can produce very accurate results, but they require much more computational power. The DMD resolution determines the dimension of phase retrieval problems, and the camera resolution determines the number of phase retrieval problems. So although various speed-up methods have been developed, if we want to recover a TM with 128 squared camera resolution and 60 squared DMD resolution, then we still need tens of CPU hours. The contribution of our proposed system is a speed-up in terms of both the number of measurements and the speed of computation. To compare the speed of holography, phase retrieval, and our proposed method, we use the three algorithms to recover a TM with 16 square input modes and 256 square output modes. To recover a TM of size n by n, phase shifting holography needs four measurements per input dimension, and the algorithm takes around one second to complete. Phase retrieval also requires four measurements in theory, but in the presence of noise it typically needs 8 to 12 to achieve optimal performance, and it takes around half an hour to run the algorithm with 12 n measurements. Our proposed method, 3.tm, uses 2n plus 1 measurements, and the algorithm can finish in fractions of a second. It is therefore the most efficient compared with the existing methods. It does not require bulky setup or a lot of samples or heavy computations, but it can still deal with arbitrarily complex mediums. The setup of 3.tm is shown here. The laser beam first passes through a series of filters and it becomes collimated, and then hits a reflective mode phase SLM, and we set different illumination patterns onto it. The modified light is then reflected and is focused onto the scatterer. After exiting the scatterer, the scrambled wavefront is focused onto the sensor, or CCD camera. For each pixel on the SLM, we set it to two different phase values to create the two n illumination patterns, and we also capture an image up front with no phase modulation on the SLM. The resulting 2n plus 1 measurements are then used to estimate the transmission matrix of the system via three-point sinusoidal curve fitting. In our algorithm, we recover all the columns of the TM in parallel, so here we demonstrate the framework of our mechanism by recovering the first TM column, which corresponds to the first SLM pixel. Light propagation through the scatterer can be denoted as matrix multiplication A times X. The intensity measurement on the sensor can be obtained by taking the square of the multiplication, or Y equal to AX squared. 
And so mathematically, to recover the first column of the TM A1, we can divide the expression y equal to ax squared into two parts, where the target is A1x1, and the background or the reference is the sum of the contributions from the rest of the SLM pixels. So if we denote the reference contribution or the sum as u1, then the intensity measurement can be expressed as a cosine function described by theta, which is the phase of the target segment and is a changing variable, and also by the amplitudes and phases of the TM elements. Notice that a1 and u1 are column vectors, and all the multiplication here are dot products. So our goal is to compute the amplitude and phase of a1 from this expression here. To accomplish this, we need to first recover the information of the cosine curve. This function has an unknown amplitude and an unknown amplitude shift, both are governed by the magnitudes of a1 and u1, and there is also an unknown phase shift, which is defined by the phase difference between a1 and u1. So to solve for three unknowns deterministically, we use three measurements to form a system of equations. Specifically, the phase of the target S on pixel theta is set to 0, 2 pi by 3, and 4 pi by 3. Notice that the first measurement can be shared across all the TM columns, whereas the other two measurements need to be made individually for each SLM pixel. Now with these, the three unknowns in the equation can be solved by some algebraic manipulation. So now we proceed to recover the first column of the TM. The amplitude of A1 can be computed with the knowledge of the amplitude and amplitude shift of the cosine function. We then perform some algebraic manipulation on the computed terms to compute the phase of the column with some phase shift that we cannot compensate for. But notice that this phase shift is constant across the pixels, and it does not affect the application of the TM. And we, then we repeat these steps for all the columns to form a complete TM recovery procedure. To validate our approach, we first evaluate our proposed solution in computer simulations. We generated random transmission matrices from IID circularly symmetric complex Gaussian distributions with 16 square input mode and 256 square output mode and we simulated noise based on the noise-free measurement of Y0, and we defined it to be a combination of Poisson and Gaussian noise to account for photon noise and read noise in the actual systems. The Gaussian noise is scaled to match the specs of the camera in our lab. To quantitatively compare 3.TM with the existing methods, we implemented a phase retrieval algorithm with 12 measurements and four-step phase shifting holography with four measurements to compare their focusing enhancement abilities. And so a perfect reconstruction, a perfect focus, means that the efficiency is equal to 1, whereas if the focusing is weak, then it goes towards 0. So phase retrieval is robust against noise at all measurement SNRs. 3.TM is comparative to 4-step holography in all cases, and the advantage of phase retrieval diminishes when noise is low. Now consider that 3.TM requires 6 times fewer measurements and is over 10,000 times faster computationally. It could be used with slowly decorrelating mediums when there is not enough time to perform phase retrieval. And we also compare the different methods with the same number of measurements, or with foreign captures. It is very clear that the performance of PRVAMP is significantly compromised with foreign measurements, and so 3.TM provides the most efficient and reliable solution among all the compared methods. Besides simulations, we also evaluated 3.TM on different mediums in the lab to validate the approach in experimental settings. With the computed TMs, it's possible to invert the scattering effects and reconstruct images from the captured noisy speckles. We are able to image through 20-degree diffusers and phantoms that we made in the lab. Here are some results of image reconstruction through the diffuser. The SLM is divided into 120 square segments, and the camera resolution is 256 squared. Although the camera only sees the speckles as displayed in the middle, the objects can be reconstructed with the estimated TM. So this is the largest estimated TM to our knowledge, and this is made possible because of the efficiency of our system. If we want to perform a phase retrieval algorithm on TM at this dimension, it will take days to collect all the necessary measurements and tens of hours to finish the computation, but our method is fast enough to get a reliable estimation of this high-resolution system. So in conclusion, we have proposed a novel approach for measuring TMs that requires only 2 n plus 1 images for an SLM with n pixels, which provides a significant speed-up to the measurement of TM. In the absence of any correlation or structures of the TM, this constitutes a minimal set of measurements, because the TM is a complex matrix with 2 n m degree of freedom. Our new approach also uses a simple setup without additional optical components in the system, and it can deal with materials with arbitrary thickness.